Welcome to the microphone, John Lochner, who will be sharing a wonderful message with us this evening. And uh, John, I'm going to pray over you right now. Lord Jesus, we just pray for your blessing over John and his mind and the words that you have given him for us this evening. Uh, fill our hearts with a yearning for your spirit and your spoken word to us. And uh, we pray for John that the words he speaks are all of you and you uh, fill us with your message tonight. Welcome, John. Amen. Amen. And we thank you for joining us. Amen. And uh, look forward to the message that you have for us this evening. Uh, take it away. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to be talking about a beggar shrew who wrote Lamentations Kings in the book of Jeremiah. So we're going to talk about that beggar. <laughs> and I'm going to start with, uh, and I'll just read through the text and then pray and then kind of move from there. And it, it starts in... Um, Jeremiah 28, verse 15, to the Jeremiah 29, uh, 35, 34. So it's a, it's a little bit of reading, but it'll uh, it'll bless you. Um, I'm sorry, 14. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 29 through 14. All right. So the context is Jeremiah is having a scuffle with Hananiah. And so... It ends this way. The prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, listen, Hananiah, the Lord did not send you, but you have led these people to trust in a lie. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I'm about to send you off the face of the earth. You will die this year because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. And the prophet Hananiah died that year in the seventh month. Chapter 29, this is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem. So he prophesied it happened. And so now you kind of fast forward to where that was. So everything he said happened. And now he's kind of recapping. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining exiled elders, the priests, the prophets, and all the people Nebuchadnezzar had deported from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconiah, the queen mother, the court officials, the officials of Judah, Jerusalem, the craftsmen, and the metalsmiths had left Jerusalem. He sent a letter with Elasim, son of Saphon, and Gemariah, son of Hilkah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon, king to the king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. The letter stated, This is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says to all exiles. I deported from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Find wives for yourselves and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters to men in marriage so that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there. Do not decrease. Pursue the well-being of the city I have deported you to. Pray the Lord on its behalf, for when it thrives, you will thrive. For this is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says. Don't let your prophets who are among you and your diviners deceive you. And don't listen to the dreams you elicit from them. For they are prophesying falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them. This is the Lord's declaration. For this is what the Lord says. When 70 years for Babylon are complete... I will attend to you and will confirm my promise concerning you to restore you to this place. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. You will call to me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you. This is the Lord's declaration, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and places where I banish you. This is the Lord's declaration. I will restore you to the place from which I deported you. And so the verse I'll start with in, in, in this whole letter, obviously the, the context is he was in a, in a in a prophetic battle <laughs> he wins uh he was for a time and i think that if you want to 
kind of it's difficult for us to understand because we don't have kings we don't have prophets we you know we're, we're uh, um our government system is just different but if you will uh think of it like this some we go into war with somebody like russia and you know of course we want to win right because they're the bad guys or whatever china pick pick your uh, pick your you know your enemy whoever who it is or maybe it's china or maybe it's russia whoever it is and, you want to, and as people as patriots as good patriots we want to win, right? We're America. We're the we're the good guys, and here Israel is in that position, right? Israel said, "We're the people of God," and God says, "Look, you guys messed up. You guys are worshiping Baal in your temples. You were sacrificing children. There were you were you were sacrificing children. You were uh, you were doing a bunch of perverted things near the altar of the temple of God to Ash Asherah and 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 Molech." And Balaam, and so God is done. God's like you, uh, you're you're gonna be uh, uh, you're gonna be in exile, but while you're in exile, and this kind of goes along with uh, Beggar Shu was talking about in their first song, because a lot of people quote the verse, right? They put this up on their walls. It says, "For I know the plans that I have for you, this Lord's declaration, plans for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope." And we put this in our in our in our homes, but the context is. You're going to be in exile for seven years. So God is reminding us that, you know, even when, when we have a bunch of stuff happening within our, whatever nation we reside in, and it happens to be America, and, and we see school systems abandoning God. We see perversions getting into the, the lives of students. We see government officials just doing something like, what is going on? And so the, the prophet Jeremiah, right, it, it's, 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 it's a reminder and a calling back to us that, in the end, God is in control. And even though I was born in this nation, if this nation turns from God, moves away from God, as Israel did, God is fully in his right to judge a nation. And in this case, he puts Israel into exile, and this for 70 years, right? And so when we look at that, we say, wait a minute, didn't he say that he's going to prosper them and that he has good plans for them and that uh, 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 what is it? Plans for your well-being, not for disaster. Give you a future and hope. You will call to me and I will come and pray to me and I will listen to you. So so he, he going along with, you know, the first song of Beggar Shoe talking about how it is actually when we are going through trials that God helps us get through. So God isn't saying, I promise that you're going to have a wonderful life and everything's going to be prosperous. You're not going to have pain. You're not going to have war. You're not going to, uh, uh, you know, be in trouble. You're, everything's going to be safe and you're going to have cops everywhere and the justice system's going to be good and everyone, you know, everybody's going to do the right thing. And so we see that as a nation that, that's starting to fall apart, right? We're starting to see that a lot of that stuff is, is broken. Uh, uh, a lot of the justices that should be ruling rightly and just are judging wicked and, and, and they're doing things that do not honor God. But amidst that, amidst Israel being in exile for 70 years in the land of Babylon, what does God say to them? And in, in, indirectly, what is God saying to his people when he tells them, build houses, live in them, plant gardens, eat their produce, Find wives for yourselves. Uh, find and 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 dump, going back to Genesis, be fruitful and multiply, right? As believers, and 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 they did. I think I looked it up in like, like when they started exile versus when they came back. That that God, even amidst tough times, seventy years of tough times, right? Israel was actually prosperous in a foreign land and a nation that was not their own. And as believers in God, <laughs> we are from another country. We are sojourner. We're walking through this earth and we have a home ahead of us. This is not our home. America's not our home. Uh, you know, Central, South, wherever, wherever you, you may come, you know, Australia's not, you know, th these are places that we're kind of walking through. But God says, while you're there, while you're there, right? And, 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 and this is the thing is like apparently Babylon, even though as wicked as they were, they let them marry, they let them own property, they let them buy houses, they let them plant any produce. And they multiplied and they increased and God used that. I mean, how many people, you know, were taking a lot of, 
by the time they, you know, by the time they're in Egypt, they're on the millions, right? And so you think, wait a minute, like, you know, how, how, how is a bunch of people, slaves working for eventually, eventually working for Egypt, not, not in this, not in this exile in the future. How is that good? But during that whole time, during that suffering, during that hardship, they listen to some other stuff, right? Obviously not all, because they wouldn't be in that predicament if they had actually fully listened to God, but they listen to God, right? And, and they listen to uh, multiply there, do not decrease. And then it says, pursue the well-being of the city. I have deported you too. And again, what this is what, this is, this isn't just God talking, talking, he's talking to his people and saying, if you are there, you're there as a witness, you're there as representative, you're here as an ambassador and as an ambassador of God, how can you bless the city, right? What kind of mercy ministries can we do? Can we serve the poor? You know, the, the, that, the whole, the whole, uh, if you read the old Testament, and you look at like all all our histories, whether you're you're a Mayan, Inca, um, a Viking, you know, they had no regard for women. They treated children as property. Uh, orphans and widows were not thought of. that. That's a very biblical Christ thing that happened with loving orphans and widows and take care. And 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 you know, uh, that's a very Christian thing that was not existing before. So it's odd. And it's weird, but it's something that God did. So as believers, when Jesus in the New Testament tells us we can be salt and light in a dark world, it goes along with what, what, what they're talking about. We can, even in a wicked land with wicked rulers, and sometimes God appoints wicked rulers as a judgment. If you read the Old Testament, <laughs> right? He tells them, I, I'm putting this guy in charge because of your sin. So it's it's a judgment. So we're like, well, God wouldn't want a bad leader to be in charge of my country. It's like, well, God can judge you because you're not salt and light. You're not involved in in in, in the things that He has called you to. You're not seeking. You're not pursuing. You're not in tune like Jeremiah, saying, "What what is it that you want me to do? What direction do you want me to take?" Right? It's it's and I get it. It's hard, especially in California. Especially since so many things costs are so expensive, so they're so expensive, and you're thinking, my main priority should be, uh, how can I make money, right? And then everything else is second, right? And and more recently, God's God's reminding me, He's saying, no, John, you need to pursue me, and you need to seek out where I want you, because where you think you need to be may not be where I have you. And in this example, the people of Israel, are like, no, God could not. Put us in exile. God would never have a Babylonian king. God would never use a wicked king for us. And, and then the Bible calls the king of Babylon his servant. And that, that should blow your head away. Like, what? God uses wicked guys to, to accomplish his end goal that they can even in exile be prosperous, even in exile, honor God in exile, occupy, expand, own land, right? And pursue the well-being of the city that I deported to you. And it says, when it thrives, you thrive. And we've seen that in the United States. There's time where the we had, I don't know what this is except for the longest time, because of the gospel, because of, 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 of Christian principles, we were the number one giving nation to all nations for, for help, for aid, and so forth. So I think it's starting to change. But so you see that 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 even when we're in places we don't want to be, even when we're in captivity, even when the government isn't where I think it should be, or uh, I don't agree with some of the things that the government's doing, God still calls his people to live in a manner worthy of him. God still says, you need to walk worthy of me. You need to be the ambassador that I called you to for the time that you're there, for the place that you're there. You are an ambassador to the king, a representative to the king. When we say in the name of Jesus, that's not a hocus pocus word. And I know I've, I've offended you by saying that. That expression has to do with what I identify as. It's like my last name. It's like I am a Christian. I am a, I am a representative of an eternal kingdom, of an eternal land. That And I'm just passing by. And as I pass by this land, I'm here to be a light 
and, and, and water to the thirsty. I'm, 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 I'm to be a vessel of mercy and all the things that God calls you. And then and he continues, and he and, and, and I love this. And I love this because they're clearly, they're clearly, at least from man's perspective, Israel's losing. Right? And they don't really have an army. <laughs> Not really. Or, or if they have, they already surrendered. But the title, <clears throat> the title is important. For this is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of things in heaven realm. God has armies at his call, at his whim. And when we are aligned to his purpose, there's a song that says, Have thou not seen how thy desires have been granted in what he ordained? And I can testify to that. God has answered my prayers so many times, so many times specifically. I'll share a couple. When I did a concert, there was a shooting in LA. There was a shooting blocks from where I live in Wilson High School. I was burdened. I wanted to do a concert. I wanted to bring a Christian, uh, Christian music group to downtown to 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 LA, and I wanted these kids to listen to not lyrics that dishonor humans that are preaching sex and gun and all this other stuff but, but words that honor king jesus and people can learn from it so i decided to do a concert a lot of miracles happened my first one ever sold out 24 a total i think 2400 people ended up going and the day of the concert and this is where like god leaves uh his fingerprints and stuff and he reminds you he that he's there as i'm doing the concert i get a notification on social media and you know how it tells you like a year ago something happened, right? And it reminds me that the day we had the concert was in the one year anniversary of the shooting. And that's not planned. That's not planned at all. Not only that, but we did it in the high school over where the shooter came from, right? Uh, uh, another time that was, uh, um, I, I do a lot of, I do uh, films every single year and I was unemployed. I had 600 bucks on my account. Uh, and I was looking for work. I mean, I was profusely looking for, for a job. And then I realized that the film competition was next week. And so I go to my wife and go, honey, I know we, we only have 500 bucks in our account. Uh, this is the last week of unemployment. But I want to do a film. And and I, I promise that I'm not going to do it unless I can raise $5,000 in, in one week. And that doesn't happen. People, Whenever you tell people I'm raising money to do a film, it's like you're asking them to go to Maui on a vacation or something. It's not. It's grueling to create a film. It's grueling, hard, hard work. It's like torture, but you do it because of the outcome. <laughs> Same thing. So I'm doing this, calling people, trying to get the five dollars running, and I've never been able to do that. I think the most prior to that, I maybe raised five hundred, and most of it has been out of pocket. Fifth guy I call says, "Hey John, I'll do it, but it needs to be a tax write-up." So I call my pastor. Hey, can we go through the church, do like a ministry fund? He's like, absolutely call him back. We can do it. We can do it. You can donate to my church and then we'll use it for the film. He's like, okay, cool, great. He responds by saying, the most I can do, John, is 5000 So it's it, it's it's precise and exact. And, and I have like tons of stories like that of God coming through, granting me the desires that I desired because they're granted on what he ordained it, right? He ordained that we should have a testimony in downtown Long Beach. He ordained that I do this specific film for his glory. And there's there's other stories like that. Those are just two of many. And so as we stand, as as we as believers, as we as we stand up like Jeremiah, right? He's the weeping prophet. Uh <laughs> nobody listens to him. He's this 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 oddball, wrote lamentations, wrote kings. He influenced by God's grace Josiah, which is actually my son, my my oldest son's name uh you know to at least for a time follow god and we can we can be salt and light we can infiltrate we can we can infiltrate the aesthetic realm of the arts and we can create beautiful things for many years christianity was they were the number one sellers for dozens and maybe hundreds of years in america and throughout the world you know now we look at him it's like, oh, bah, bah. but back in the day they're really important a blind lady uh, fanny j crosby she was the what, what's her name? Uh, she was the Taylor Swift of her time. 40,000 songs. Uh, so, I mean, th tens of thousands of songs selling. She had to write surnames because she was a woman at the time. 
only only blind person to stand before Congress, only a woman to stand before Congress. And so you have all these testimonies of like, no, we can actually Christ, Christ, when he came to restore his kingdom, right? He says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there's there's a there's a there's a, there's a realm, there's a eternal realm, there's a sacred realm that he's bringing back to earth. When we when we sinned in the garden. We, we, we fell, we, we, we were separated from this spiritual realm. We died spiritually. That's what we, 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 he says, we are spiritually discerned. And it wasn't until Christ's restoration, when he came back, that he restored, he made us spiritually alive. And I think most theologians would agree with that statement. I was dead and he gave me spiritual life. And I was made alive supernaturally, not because I was smart, not because I was intelligent, not because I was pretty, not many mighty, not many strong, but God has chosen the weak things, the things that are not. And he does it to show the world that it's not about you. It's about his power. It's about his glory. He used weak vessels like Jeremiah, uh, you know, like that are just like, I just want to stand up for truth. I just want to seek God. I just want to do his will. And God tells me to do something as crazy as I might be. If I have to walk around a building and shout at the end of it, then I'll shout. If I have, you know, whatever God calls me to be, but I know it's him because I love him because I fear him. I'm going to do it. And then he causes the results. He causes. And in this case, God is saying, I'm going to put you in exile for seven years. But while you're there, be my witnesses, multiply, farm, build houses, bless the city, prosper the city. Because as it prospers, as their stock goes up and you own their stock, you have more money for kingdom stuff. So so God God is 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 in Jeremiah reminding of but, but again it wasn't easy. It was hard, right? And for and even later on, they weren't just exiles where they let them do this stuff. They were prisoners, they were slaves. <clears throat> but even through that, they stayed faithful. And we have examples of Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, people that did not bend the knee, people like Jeremiah that stood up for truth. And the promise, right? So when we when next time you read this. You will seek me and find, uh, when you read this, remember the context. The context is, you're in exile. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your well-being. Not for disaster, he'll give you a future and a hope. You will call to me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. I will be found by you. God promises that even in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your suffering, in the midst of, 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 of um, not good times, in the, in the times of bad economy, wherever you might be, God is saying, those are the times that I'm still going to be there for you, that I'm still going to comfort you, that I'm still going to be your song, that I'm still going to be uh, uh, um, your strength. He is our strength. He is our song. And and so um, so that's it. That's the message today. You will seek him and you will find him when you search him with all your heart. And he promised you if you seek him, you will be found by him. And he, he remembers, he, he tells us this is the Lord's declaration. He's declaring it. It's his word. He's speaking it out. This is what I'm saying. Don't worry. Don't look at your situation and your circumstance, whatever's happening. I'm doing something. I'm still working. I'm still going to honor and glorify my name, and I'm still going to use you. No matter how dark it gets, God is still in control. And God is going to, if you if you, if you you call, call on his name, he will hear you. If you seek him with your heart, he will answer. And that's the message that I have for you. John, it's a wonderful message. Thank you so much. And I can attest to the truth of uh, John's words in the way that our precious Lord has looked after us in our ministry with Aussie Grown Radio when uh, we have been uh, battling the uh, forces that come against the word of God. He has always been there and provided for us and brought us through wonderful messages a uh, wonderful message of uh, comfort and truth uh, from John Lochmer today. Thank you.
for your beautiful words. Lord, uh, I'm going to pray just without asking for you, John. Uh, wonderful words that you've given uh, John Lockman today, Lord Jesus. We thank you and pray for him. Pray for his continued ministry. Pray for his filling uh, him with your spirit and uh, overflowing him with the, the words of truth from your word. Thank you that uh, you have brought him to uh, Red's room this Friday and uh, the message that he shared. And we pray for your continued protection and blessing over him through good times and bad, through uh, life at home and life in exile, wherever that may be. We just praise you for him and praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, John. A wonderful message, as I said, and we uh, we just love those words that just speak to us so clearly. And uh, thank you to John as we head.